to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. We One more time, come on, sing. Imagine this were your mother. Jesus, we believe. Jesus, there is Don't cry. In your name. Don't cry. In the name of Jesus, the anointing is on all of you, all three of you. Right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit. I cause this devil of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. I command brand new kidneys right now. Mommy, brand new kidneys in the name of Jesus. I cause that devil of infirmity. I see you in the spirit. Go in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Renal failure, I cause you by the blood of the eternal covenant. I curse you. 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 Hallelujah. Mama, look at me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am healed. I am. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am. I am. Look at me. Everybody leave her. Leave her alone. Come. Come. Help her. Come. Help her. Hold this please. Help her. That devil is a liar. Please put this in. Walk. Come. Leave her. Don't hold her. Just guide her. Come. Come. Just turn around. Turn around. Help her. Turn around. Come. Kidney failure. That devil is. Look at she's happy. Look at what is happening. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Come. That devil is a liar. Let her come. Let her come. Help her. Just guide her. Let her come. That devil is a liar. Lift your legs, mama. Go ahead. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. Lift your legs. In the name of Jesus. Listen, this is witchcraft. Your mother would have died on Sunday. They would have told you this woman is dead. She would have slept like that and woken up. Because as I looked, I saw the spirit. And I was looking, I said, what is this? And they were carrying her out. Look, it's better for them to come and die here than to get up. We are not playing games. This just came to prove the teaching. I'm about to say some other things. You must believe. They, they believed God, but they didn't stop there. They would have stayed in Shika, and this woman would have died because I see in a vision, Sunday, they would have said it's over. Huh? Don't cry. Don't, don't cry, gentlemen. In the name of Jesus. Mama, I assure you, you will come back and stand here to give your testimony. That wicked spirit that has been tormenting you. Huh? Go and look. Has she been eating? She has not been eating because the Holy Ghost is ministering to me that Mama is hungry. Find something for her to eat. God bless you. Take her. Lift your hands and let's bless his name for one minute. Please sit down, sit down, sit down. Let's hurry up. Let's continue. Sorry about that.
there is a spiritual strategy for manifesting faith just like we saw i don't know how long our mother has been but in seconds you can authorize the power of god see I already sense the healing anointing so as you're listening to me if you are sick here this is always what happens because when once one miracle happens the water is stirred, right very important brothers and sisters listen it's not like these guys could not have prayed for mama there is nothing special about me this is what I want you to understand the goal I know some of you are saying I don't agree. There's, just listen to what I'm telling you. You know, you know as I preach, I, I discern your thoughts. I know what you are agreeing with and what you are not agreeing with. <laughs> Hallelujah. The equation of faith. Let me give you an equation of faith that if you practice I guarantee you are touching the integrity of the maker of heaven you will be shocked at what your life will become it will begin to produce immediate results for you immediate results hallelujah pray in tongues for one minute as we prepare to receive this we're hurrying up please take it serious say Lord open my eyes don't just hear don't just look see Inside and outside, pray in tongues, participate. Open our eyes, we submit to you. Great Spirit of God, open our eyes. and this is the faith that overcomes even our faith this is number one the faith of God that produces results in your life always starts with revelation Bible faith, please hear me, always starts with revelation. You can never manifest true faith until there is a revelation. A revelation. The first piece of the equation of faith is revelation. And there are two dimensions to revelation please look up the first is study 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 and the second is meditation you don't have revelation just by wishing study it first starts by searching out you cannot have faith in what you do not know i love this baby come ashes i prayed She's going to run to her mother now. <laughs> May God bless. One, one of these days, our children will open the service for us. All of them will just hold the mic and blast in tongues for 10 minutes. Oh yes, many of them pray in tongues. At their age, we didn't even know whether, but, but God is doing a lot of work in our children. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. Revelation. So it starts with diligently searching. Everybody say diligently searching. Now, the problem with many believers, you cannot spend your life just reading newspapers, chase magazines, name them, all those kinds of rubbish and expect to have Bible faith. Even if there is a column where a man of God quickly shared something, faith doesn't come that way. Brothers and sisters, there is an investment you must make in studying the word. Look at me. This is your promised land. You must walk through it. Every time you read the Bible, it's like you are walking through your promised land to see what God has given you. 
to see what has been apportioned to you. So as I study this, I see verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall also do greater works than this. As I study, I begin to see if ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day. Right? That you will be exalted above all nations and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. Are you getting my point? When you are studying the Bible, imagine that you are walking around your land of promise. When you study the Bible, you are seeing the things that have been paid for. Are you getting my point? That cancer is killing you and you take the Bible and you search. And you see where he hung on that cross and he said, it is finished. But that has not entered you. You are aware. Remember, you are getting revelation and this is only the first part. That's why I'm telling you what many people call faith is not faith. So I begin to walk around the promised land. Like he told Abraham, he said, from where thou art, lift up your eyes and look eastward, northward. That's what you do. When you begin to study, it's like you are walking through your land of promise. Brothers and sisters, you may be soaking Gary, just walk through the land. You are, you are no problem. There is no stove to boil the Indomie. Break it. As you are eating, walk. Walk. <laughs> you think I don't know how that thing works? be fooled by what you see there is a testimony of the transition of faith see that I was sharing with a lady that once upon a time I used to buy bread and cut it and put granite there's a way you arrange it so that with every bite you know the whole surface area is covered you push it in you are not the first to do it. So all that insult, you've been insulting God. You said, look, there are people who did not even have the bread. Right? And God brought them out of it. So he will, he will bring you up. We just sang that our status is changing. But it starts as I walk through the land of promise. Everybody say the word of God is my land of promise. Say one more time, the word of God. I know tonight's teaching is very simple, but don't trivialize the power of it. The word of God is my land of promise ha so i study brothers and sisters see as i'm I, I feel like just sitting down to start studying the bible as i'm just talking to you now a weak person a non-entity nobody knows you but when you walk through that land of promise you are already engaging something you may not understand there's i'm not denying the look i'm not denying the fact that you are in pain don't get me wrong faith does not deny what is happening you see that? Aha. Uh -huh. So if I'm sick and I say, I have headache, it's not negative confession. No. Please. If you want to say you are well, say you are well. But if I'm sick and I tell you something is, is pinching me here, it's not lack of faith. Are you getting my point? Many of us have felt so guilty. We don't even know when you are serious, when you are saying the real thing or not. You say, bros, can we get 20 naira? I say, I'm rich. Say, no, no, no. The issue is... You know, if you don't want to say, okay, there's nothing exactly in the pocket. Please, don't feel embarrassed. Don't make it look like the word of God makes you a fool. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't just speak anyhow and then things change. Speaking is a law. The Bible says a curse causeless shall not stand. Are you getting what I'm saying? So don't just say, if I speak anyhow, whether I believe it or not, something happens. Be wise. That's why we are growing. Praise God. Study. So I walk through this thing. Look, let me tell you how I study. Let me show you how I study. I don't study foolishly. I study strategically. Everybody says strategically. My goal of studying the Bible is not to crime scriptures. There are real needs on ground. Criming does very little in helping you produce results. I hope you are aware. You can cram Genesis to Revelation. The part you truly act out in faith is the part that works for you. Is that true? So, I write different aspects of my life that I want to see the glory of God revealed. I write ministry. I write my finances. Are you following me now? 
different aspects and I begin to walk through the garden of the Lord, my promised land, finding out what God's idea, what are his promises, what is his, what does his word have to tell me about this? How far can I be anointed? To what limit? The problem is, you see the reason why the devil kills your word study life. Right? See, when the devil wants to destroy you, there are three things he just attacks. It's very easy. Number one, he kills your word life. Number two, he kills your prayer life. Number three, he kills your corporate fellowship life. When these three are dead, you are finished. It's as simple as that. Just three things. You want to go and study and all of a sudden that lukewarmness. Notice, ladies, you've read novels that are two times larger than this. But to read just three or four pages, that's to tell you there is a devil that does not want you to see something. Are you getting my point? I can give you a storybook and you can read. Many of you have gone to the library you have gone to different things. There are many people who in your place of work, you are given tasks that require you reading voluminous books and you do all of that within a week. But how come when it comes to studying this, you thought it's because the letters are small. You brought, you bought large letter edition. It's still, it's big. There, is a, there is a spirit. Hallelujah. Everybody says study. It starts there. Let me not deceive you, brothers and sisters. Faith is not cheap. If you understand this, you will respect everyone who walks by faith. True Bible faith starts the encounter of the word. When you study, you find the promises. When you find the promises, the next thing is meditation. Everybody say meditation. It's still part of getting to the point of revelation. I'm trying to break down how faith truly works. Say meditation. What is meditation? The word meditation as, as it's not just to, to speak aloud. The word meditation is the process that makes a revelation become your own. You see that? Okay, now you are studying. He told Peter, for instance, cast your net to the right side. How does that story relate to your situation in Zaria? Meditation. Meditation begins to draw out the spirit of that word. It begins to personalize it. It's in the place of meditation that some of us even have encounters. Real encounters. While you are meditating under a heavy unction, you can sleep and then you have a dream. In that dream, you can have encounters. Some of you can see men of God. Some of you can see people. And that thing crystallizes your conviction. You get up and hold that scripture and say, I caught this. See that? When, when there is meditation, the end of it is conviction. The whole goal of revelation is to bring you to a point of conviction. Another word is persuasion. I'm showing you how Bible faith starts. Persuasion. Persuasion. If you are not persuaded, you cannot finish the equation. Because you will doubt on the way. So you must strengthen your persuasion before the journey begins. Hallelujah. You don't believe in tithing. You just did it because your pastor laughed at you and said, Look, you have not been paying tight. I'm, I'm watching those who are standing. I'm working in the same office with you. It's, it's me that pays your salary. Eh? And, and you get angry. And you get afraid. And so just to please your pastor, you just squeeze your envelope and frown and stand. And you lift it up, let him see you. Oh, I'm dropping it now. You won't be blessed that way. That's mechanical. I never do things until I have the revelation for them. It's painful to do a thing without having the revelation. You'll be trying to copy others. And after wasting your time, you won't get their results. Don't be hasty in doing anything. Get a revelation. Hallelujah. Do you spend time meditating? Let me tell you, one of the greatest key to meditation is silence. Many of us are too noisy 
for the word of God to become alive in us. It's God speaking to us. There are times in the night, late in the night, I just carry a chair and I go outside and I just sit down. No noise. All the noise makers are asleep. And I just sit down. And I'm just praying in tongues. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Sometimes I could just carry. Worship is not noise. You can have that faint atmosphere of worship. And you're just sitting down. All of a sudden, a scripture like an arrow will fire into your spirit. When you share it with somebody, you'll be disappointed that they don't jump at it the way you jump. Because it's a revelation to you. Have you ever shared a scripture with somebody and said, my goodness, my brother, you are slapping your head while you are talking. Say, ah, is it not last week's coin on your And you live there so sad and disappointed. Don't be disappointed. They are life to those who find them. To those who find them. It has become your revelation. Now you are ready to move to the next level. Are we following now? So the equation starts with what? Number one is revelation. And under revelation, it takes study and meditation. When a revelation has truly entered your spirit, it will bring conviction. Listen, I've said it again and again and let me repeat it. Revelation is not knowing what God has said. That's study. Revelation is knowing what it takes to make it work in your life. Hmm. Number two, the second dimension the moment conviction and persuasion is there, you believe it. That's why many of us stop. But that's not all there is. Let me shock you. The next dimension to the equation of faith is prayer. And I'll tell you why. It's not just acting. It's prayer. Listen to me. I'm telling you what works. Prayer. When you catch a revelation, the next thing is not to run. You will miss something major. This is where a lot of people miss it. Are you getting it now? When you catch a revelation, brothers and sisters, the next dimension is prayer. An investment praying in tongues. I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost with evidence of praying in tongues, real fluent spiritual tongues given by the Holy Ghost, contend for it. We are more than ready to minister to you here. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost has settled this issue of tongues or no tongues in the body of Christ. You are the only one who has not had the revelation. It's a done deal. It's a settled thing. The advantages of praying in the spirit is, is beyond any denominational barrier whatever it is. What does prayer do to you? Two things. Prayer reveals the strategy. Kabbalah katabala. It's not enough to know what God wants to do. There is always what you must do to commit God. Prayer is where you get the strategy. Hear me. It is not every place in scripture where the condition is verbatim. There are some situations that are customized to you. Let me give you an instance. You now read how Jesus healed blind Bartimaeus, Right? Or how God opened the womb of Anna. I'm Hey, okay, well, I'm not a woman. I wanted to use an example. Of... <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, but imagine that there is a woman who is buried, unable to take in, and now she begins to meditate, seeing the ministry of fruitfulness all in the Bible, all the scriptures that God has placed for fruitfulness, and all the barren women in the Bible who God opened their womb. She's studying, and in it, she begins to find spiritual keys. Are you getting my point? What they did. It does not mean you just, you can stand up. Your situation may not afford you the opportunity to do exactly what they did. For instance, some people left to Jericho. Where is your own Jericho? That you, are you getting me? It is in the place of prayer. The Holy Ghost gives you your customized strategy. Are you getting my point? Two things happen in prayer. We are, we are a praying ministry. See, you must be a man of prayer to appreciate what I'm saying. If you don't pray, it won't make sense to you. As you begin to pray, the strategy comes. You can't obey until the instruction comes. Are you getting my point? Strategy. So I begin to pray. 
Lord, in the name of Jesus, a crowd is packing food here. How are we going to get another venue? And I'm praying, humanly speaking, there may not be another venue. Lord, we thank you. What are you saying? And I begin to study the wilderness ministry of Jesus. How did they manage the crowds? What did they do? But we are not in the wilderness. So I need a rema. Are you getting my point? Prayer is what brings the spirit of the revelation. And then you will hear a word for you. Sometimes you can be praying. It is in the place of prayer that you get the customized revelation. And then two things happen. Number one, I told you, you get the strategy or the instruction. The second thing is you receive the grace supplied for obedience. You can never obey God until grace is given to you. Because some of the instructions that you will get from the place of prayer will be too hard. Some of the instructions may be empty your account. Some of the instructions may be pray all through the night. Is someone getting what I'm saying? Some of the instructions may be make sure you come and buy water here for three weeks. All kinds of instructions. That's why he not only gives you strategy, he releases the grace. Many people try to obey without the grace. This is the two-part dimension of grace that I want to explain to you. There is the dimension of grace that brings you into the finished work of Christ. And there is the dimension of grace supplied to you to obey, to actualize it. Right? It has been paid for, but you need grace to ensure its delivery. Someone's situation is changing. So you see that you prayed, you believed it. Oh, a job is coming. I found that revelation where Jesus, the, the master, told them, He said, Why sittest thou idle? You see, you have to search. Lord, I'm jobless. Uncle, give me a job. You will, you will be frustrated forever. All those uncle and the thing. Many of us have never paid attention to this other option. You just hear it. But why don't you go back to the word of God? Lord, I don't have a job. Holy Spirit, guide me. And all of a sudden, the spirit of God, who, who searches the mind of God, begins to reveal to you. And you find that parable, for instance. You find the parable where Jesus was sending people into the vineyard. Is that true? And he met some people and said, why sittest thou idle? Is that not a scripture now that relates to your situation? True study. There are Bible concordances. There are Greek and Hebrew Bibles. There is Bible gateway. There are many Bible softwares that ease your search. Huh? Scriptures on joblessness. Google. Enter. And scriptures come out. No, no, no. Look, don't laugh. Except you don't want a job. And you bring them out. Some may make sense, some may not make sense. Just scan them. And you find, you don't need plenty. It may just be one. And now you are getting that scripture. Watch this. When you get that scripture, you meditate. Lord, open my eyes. What made the master to call them? Was there anything on their part that they did? Is there something in between the line in this story that my eyes has not seen? Hallelujah. And you get it. So God is able. You see, the might, the revelation of the might of God begins to down on you. If God gave these people jobs and he paid them salary, it means I can get a job and they will pay me salary. And you begin to pray. The moment you begin to pray, don't just get up and act and say, yes, I've caught it, application. I hereby write for a job in this company. You must give me. What grace is sponsoring that, 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 that religiosity? That's religion. That's why you open the office and they'll say, what are you saying? You say, I want a job. They say, walk out of here. Do you think? And you, and you now live disappointed. You went with a lot of zeal. God is good. He has done me well. And, and now you are there and, and you are disappointed because you did not finish the equation of faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The next thing you would have done is to take that revelation to the place of prayer. The threshing floor. Where your customized, unique instruction is given. Somebody's breakthrough is already happening to him. Because God is showing you the missing link. It will work. And then I begin to pray. This is how I do with koinonia messages. I play the messages. 
And while the messages are playing, because there are some things that I said by the Holy Ghost, the man of God is preaching and Joshua Selman is listening to him. And while he's preaching and praying, and I just hear something. Once you hear it, you are ready to act. Because the moment an instruction comes, that instruction can still refer you back to the Bible. Right? It doesn't just mean that you see an angel with wings. You can hear it and then an instruction will come. You can be praying and say, Lord, change my situation. As I go for koinonia, change my situation. And while you are praying, Lord, I believe you will change my life tonight. And while you are praying, a scripture just come. Jesus told the lepers, go and show yourself to the priest. You see that? That's a revelation that would have not made sense in a normal day. But to you, it is God's rema to you. And the Bible says, as they went. What, what does that mean? It means you should stand up and go. See that? And as you go, you commit the integrity of God to perform. So prayer reveals the strategy and it also supplies grace. Because there are some instructions, especially financial instructions. Some of you, you, have not, you are not givers. That's why it, 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 you don't get... There are some people here who are reckless givers. If you are a true giver, you know that you need grace. It's called giving grace. Because you are crying and saying, Lord, change my situation. Lord, I leave this 10,000. Something must happen. I don't have an uncle. I don't have an auntie. My father is dead. My mother is dead. I don't have anybody... I didn't have the opportunity to go to school. You are the only one I have. And Lord, if you do not help me, I have seen in the word of God that these are the situations and God says, take now thy Isaac, that son. Are you a fool? You are about to go and use that money and at least even buy a Bible with it. And God says, I know it's a Bible you want to buy. Forward match. Sometimes God can tell you to go and sow it into the life of somebody you don't love. You can't pretend you didn't hear it. See that? But in that instruction, you are now ready to obey. That's the last final phase of the equation of faith. Prompt and complete obedience. Please write. Number one is revelation. Number two is prayer. Number three is prompt and complete obedience. Having all readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Prompt and complete obedience. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19. Please let's hurry up. Let me tell you something brothers and sisters. This is the hardest part of the equation of faith. Settling down to study is not the hard part. This is the labor dimension of faith. Are you getting me? This is where you labor in the spirit. It says if ye be what? And not willing and desirous, not willing and hungry. If ye be willing, revelation makes you willing. But obedience, the hardest part, this is the link, brothers and sisters, this is the consummation of the faith equation. No matter what else you do that you call faith, if you do not obey, it is not called faith. Hallelujah. Confession. Sowing of seeds. Only become potent. When we are willing to obey. When we are willing to obey. Everybody say obedience. I have found out. That this is the link. Between where you are. And where you need to go. Brothers and sisters. Obedience is not child's play. Obedience is hard work. That's why you must receive the grace in the place of prayer. Lord, I know you are about to speak and I cannot pretend that I'm not hearing you. So grant me the grace that when the instructions come, may they not be too heavy. Yes. 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 That's all I'll say to him. 
your link to the next level yes. when you hear that instruction yes. it means your season is about to change a guarantee listen your obedience is what judges the devil obedience obedience oh I feel the anointing of the spirit I'll hurry up so that we will pray brothers and sisters obedience obedience we are going to look at one case study and then we'll support you with a few Isaiah 51 please quickly 1 and 2 let's hurry up Isaiah 51 Let's look at a man who from the Bible is called the epitome of faith. Isaiah 51. Hallelujah, verse 2. Everyone read. It says, look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him and I increased him. That means God is giving you a case study. He's saying now that you know what faith is, look at a biblical portrait, understudy his life, and you will find therein the keys. So let's study Abraham. Genesis 22. Quickly, please. Our first case study is Abraham. How did God turn an idol worshiper, a mediocre in a small land called the awe of the Chaldeans? How did he become so prosperous? How did he become the father of faith? Hallelujah. Verse 2. It says, and he said, watch this. Okay, let's go to 12, verse 1 and 2, then we'll come back to 22. Genesis 12 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible, do you know that the person who was supposed to carry this, this fatherly mantle was his father, Terah? It was not Abraham. Terah missed it through disobedience. And the Bible says, now the Lord had said unto Abraham, get thee out of what? Are you seeing now? So, we see that an instruction came. What was the instruction? Get out. Don't ask questions. Just move. It says, get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred father's house, unto a land that I will show you. He said, if you do this, here's the result. I will make of thee. Many times we cut the part of the scripture and just start claiming, I will. no, there was an instruction. Faith is a response to an instruction. Hmm. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Next verse. Verse 3 now. Help us media. In Jesus name. Please walk together. We have to really rush. Okay, no problem. And then he finished all the blessings. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall the families of the earth be blessed. When will that happen? When will that happen? What was the first instruction? Get out. Abraham would have remained there and he would have died an idol worshiper at the awe, at awe of the Chaldeans. He got up and began to move. Go to verse 13. Chapter 13, sorry. Chapter 13, not. Chapter 13, from verse 1. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot went with him into the south. Abraham took a step and he started moving. Lord said, I'm going with you. For joining in the obedience alone, the man became blessed. Are you getting me now? Lot was not part of the covenant. Like Ruth held on to who? Naomi. She was not supposed to be part of the lineage. She said, no way. I'm not going anywhere. Oh, prophet, thank you. I'm, I'm leaving. 
Bible said, no way. Your obedience is my, whatever you do, I will do. 22 verse 1. Here was a test. The instruction was going to come for that promise to become real. At this point, Abraham had begun to experience some, some kinds of things. Liftings and all of that. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt. The word tempt there is test. Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am, verse 2. And he said, What? Take your son. We are understudying Abraham. Abraham did not just carry Isaac. He would have slaughtered his son for nothing with no blessing attached. You move as instructed, not as you wish. Either instructed by the voice of the spirit or the principles of the word. It's still the same. We have been taking steps out of our wishes and not out of the voice of God. It says, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I'll show you. Verse 3, may that be your testimony. Read the first line. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. Everybody say prompt obedience. Delayed disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience in a measure. When God speaks to you, stand up. The moment you sit down there, that grace gets exhausted. And you find out you no longer can stand up. God told you to sow the seed. At that point, because it was in the place of prayer, you could do it. He said, wait, later on. When you came, you now calculated how much? 120. Hi! What did I hear like this? In the morning, you even said it's even 200 I will give. But something has happened. See that? Or go and lay your hands on the woman in Shika. And you say, in the name of Jesus, I'm going. I know that they are used to seeing me just as a brother. But I'm going as instructed. And later on, you just say, let me quickly just go and greet uh, Benga. And see whether he has prepared lunch. After the lunch and everything, you get up and your mind starts telling you, you self, they have already called you stupid even before you behave stupid. Now, by the time you go to the hospital, what if they drive you? What if something happens to the car? I say, oh Lord, I'll just intercede. After all, it's, it will soon be time for prayers. You see, when, the, the beauty of grace is you take advantage of it immediately. The grace for obedience must be maximized promptly. He rose up early. There is a reason why the Bible tells us that. Remember, we're understanding Abraham. He rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and so on and so on and so forth. Uh, let's go to verse 5. Verse 5. Okay, verse 7. He said, and Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, my father, and he said, here I am. He said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb? The son didn't know he was the lamb. Next verse, please. Let's hurry up. And Abraham said, my God shall provide a lamb for his bond offering. So they went up together. Verse 9. And they came to a place which God had done this and that and that, and he bound Isaac. Verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth. Makalabo kataya. His obedience was about to be complete. Do you know if he did not leave that knife, everything he has done is multiplied by zero. It's painful when you start your obedience and stop. You've paid too much price. Why don't you finish it and, and commit God's integrity? Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Verse 11. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, lay not thy hand on the lad, neither do thou anything to him. He said, for now. See that? For when? Not when you left your house. Not when you were at the base of the mountain. For now. I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son. In other words, you obeyed me even unto death. The blessing follows. 13. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and beheld a ram caught by the thorns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it at a bond offering instead of his son. 14. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Are you seeing that now? Jehovah Jireh, you are singing it. Jehovah Jireh. Uh -uh. Don't just sing. What did he do that made that a revelation? My God shall supply all my needs. True. According to his riches in glory. But according to your obedience, 
to the instructions that will bring that riches. 15. And the angel of the Lord called out of Abraham, called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said by myself come on now this is god stepping in when your equation is complete satan was not mentioned here it was a deal between god and he said by myself i have sworn because thou hast done done not said not confess oh i will kill isaac in the name of jesus isaac you are dead in fact it's not that you are dying you are dead it's nonsense if there is no obedience he said and has not withheld thy son 17 he said that in blessing i will bless you and in multiplying i will multiply you as the as, as thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sun which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall what possess the gates of thy enemy please i want you to make up your mind beginning from today that obedience will become the watchword of your life this is Bible faith. Obedience. In Joshua chapter 6, just write it. I will not need to go there. The walls of Jericho. I want to show you. In fact, when you go to Hebrews 11, the Bible begins to give us the archives of men who did exploit with what we know called faith. And you find out that for all of them, there may be variations here and there. But one common thing is that they all took steps when a word came took steps jericho in joshua chapter one the lord began to speak to joshua he said as i was with my servant moses so i will be with you right he said only don't be afraid be courageous and so on and so forth and and you know he looked at all of them now watch this god had told him he had given him jericho but if they just went do you know they would have killed them please learn this never obey just try to obey without prayer involve God you will get the unique instructions that's where the power lies in the word in the instruction hallelujah when Joshua went to pray in the night what happened the strategy was revealed to him so on one side you will take Jericho but there is a strategy it's a strategy that was never used in the Bible for anything again it came as a rema and he told him he said walk around that's the strategy. You walk around today and it may not work until it is a rema. But he walked around seven times, right? And on the seventh day, he went seven times and he said, Now, Tehila, let there be a shout. That was a strategy. Other times, he told Jehoshaphat, he said, Put the worshippers in front and let them begin to sing and say, You are good and your mercies endure forever. That's the strategy for you. Your strategy may be come for counseling. God can tell you there is an anointing you will receive and it will change your life. Write your name for counseling. Even if there is nothing, just come. That's a strategy. For someone else, the Lord will say, go on a three-day fast. In the three-day fast, I will speak to you and you will catch a light. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you see that many of the things we call faith is not faith. It's not faith. It's just metaphysics. The widow in Zarephath, 1 Kings 17 from verse 7 to 16. Just write it, will not turn there for time's sake. Remember what happened. God commanded Elijah to go to Zarephath. There he will meet a widow. And watch this. He came and he met a woman in a state of lack and insufficiency. She needed to put her faith to work. But she could not put her faith to work until a word would come. And the prophet said, bring me water. The woman would have said, water for what? Water for what? And she took the water and as she was bringing it, he said, also bring me a morsel of bread. And she said, honestly, sir, this instruction is so much. He said, just do this. And the Bible says, when she obeyed, her faith was released and she saw the supply. Are you seeing in scripture that all through the hallmark of faith is obedience? In my opinion, there is one word for faith obedience that's it one word obedience if you do not obey the word forget about the manifestation when we're about to start koinonia 
I went to the Lord because the Lord had shown me in a vision. But where I saw in a vision, I could not relate with any physical place. And then I was, my mind had a lot of options here and there. But I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, I know that you are able to do this. All I need is a strategy. And I was praying, praying in the spirit. Just lying down and worshiping. And all of a sudden, I had CGC. The Lord spoke to me. And I said, Lord, I don't even know the people here. How are we going to get access to the place? And the Lord told me, I've gone before you. You see, you don't need to do anything. Just stay there. The word has come. And see where we are today. The product of faith. It will work any day. It will work any time. One time I was praying and I said, Lord, how do we do now? There are sick people and your people need to be equipped. And the Lord said, turn the last Friday of every month to become a special time to minister to the people. When the counseling was getting too much, every day I said, Lord, what is, what is this strategy? And first we had moved to Saturday. And then the Lord helped us to arrive. Who does counseling on Monday by 11 o'clock? Does that make sense to you? That's what God said. Look, brothers and sisters, if he speaks, start moving. Let your mind understand later on. Are you getting what I'm saying? Look at Jesus. I love Jesus. Jesus looks at a man who is blind. Sir, I am blind. And then Jesus makes mud, right? Puts in his eyes and says, go and wash. Go and wash. Go and wash. I'm blind. If I could see, would I come to you? They let me. He didn't say, neighbors, take him to go and wash. He said, find your way there. Same thing Elisha told Naaman. Go and bath. See, you can choose to be arrogant about it or you can humble yourself and enter that water seven times and change your story. Naaman said, but then no rivers. The, the, the servant said, I'm walking with you. Soon I will leave you all. Please, you better be healed so that this thing will be better for us. You are a liability to me, this and that and that. Go and bath. And he went, watch this. He went and started obeying, but nothing happened till his obedience was complete. Six times he would have gotten up and just gone with mud like a fool. A man who brought victory. Right? He would have just moved and said, Ah, Captain, where are you from? He said, What well, one stupid prophet? gave me an instruction after six times i said come on my pride will not allow me many of you started obeying one step to see the hand of god the devil brought you back and look nothing happened one step some of you came for miracle service for instance and we said in the name of jesus you shout that name jesus and you just stood and said i beg there is. people were just shouting like fools and you were there and said, ah, everybody was getting blessed getting healed instructions instructions the secret of true faith when you get that word obey the truth is we have not been obedient enough and this is why we've not been seeing it look at the feeding of the five thousand jesus took the bread blessed it and did what the bread did not multiply in the hands of jesus did it no sir he gave them he said go and start sharing go and start sharing look at the ten lepers he told them, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. And they went at that word. The Bible said, as they went. Not before, as they went. It says, this sign shall follow, not go before. You have to take steps. A miracle always comes, or the miracle always comes, after the instruction or condition is met. Never forget this. The miracle always comes after the instruction has been obeyed fully. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. Oh, yes, Lord. I will obey. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your way. Oh, yes, Lord. I will obey. Faith, therefore, is defined as the action you take. Right, we're concluding. Faith is defined 
as the action you take based on your conviction of God's word and in line with the instructions required by God right faith is the action you take not the desire to act the very action you take based on your conviction of God's word and in line with the conditions or instructions required by God if you do that you have manifested what the Bible calls Bible faith otherwise you will just be playing games and talking games I told the Lord whatever you demand of me I will do I was in Abuja and um, one of my very nice shoes that I love I was polishing the thing to package it and the Lord told me this shoe goes for so 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 person someone sowed a very major seed into my life and as soon as I received it God said now you are an usher pass it to so 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 person years ago I would have cried but I've grown because every time his instruction comes that's my status changing that's it changing hallelujah last year when we were starting koinonia the lord said we should carry all the seed in the house and sow everything everything the whole money i told the finance department i said the lord has given an instruction pack everything ah. if god has told you you will marry a man of god it, start praying for grace don't just say when pray for grace because you are the man himself is is enough to be a ministry for you a true man of god is strange right you wake up and see a man roaming like a zombie in your room speak lord i'm listening on it was going on i'm okay it's all right and you are wondering whether you are the one who is going as a sacrifice or not listen you will never receive breakthrough beyond the level of your last obedience. Never. 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 Don't reject the instructions of God. Every time you search the Bible, look for conditions, not just promises alone. What are the conditions tied to them? Hallelujah. I sowed that seed and in less than two hours, more than 1,000% of that seed came into my life. Hallelujah. Crazy instructions that God has given me. Crazy instructions. I remember when I traveled to Canaan land as the instruction of the Lord. I went with a seed and I went there when I was done outside in the public, not in one small corner. The Lord told me, go on your knees on that ground. And I went down there. I've shared the story. You know about it. I've shared with you how the Lord instructed me to give everything. Everything. Hallelujah. I carried my Isaac. Dragged it into the church. And came and placed it on the altar like a fool. Don't want any man's glory until you can obey the instructions he obeyed. What you need to pray for is Lord grace there was a time the Lord instructed me I locked myself for three days non-stop my eyes did not see the sun did not see the sun because the Lord said so no sun no food no nothing the only thing that I did was to take my bath and that was because the bathroom was inside the room where I stayed no nothing are you willing to obey if ye be willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land hallelujah i told you about how i trekked from the roundabout in pz right at the instruction of the lord the roundabout in pz i trekked to aviation praying in tongues i take this city the keys of this city is given unto me don't you sit down and see people coming and think it's just because i'm a young man it's not charm when you obey him, his integrity is committed. Who is God speaking to tonight? Stop grumbling and complaining. Cry and say, Lord, what is the word for the next level? 
Because if he gives you that word, you will rise to it. Hallelujah. I remember someone who one time, his father was sick. And he played an instrument for, from night. The Lord gave him an instruction to play an instrument. From about 10 till about 6 in the morning. He said, just play that instrument non-stop. And that guy was worshipping. By the morning, the father was healed. Look at me. The arm of the Lord is not too short, Koinonia. Are you hearing me? There are pastors, there are people. We like miracles, but we hate instructions. We hate instructions. My life moves at the pace of the instructions of the Lord. Instructions of the Lord. I think it was yesterday or day before yesterday. I saw one suit that I like. New suit. They just sold it to me. And the Lord showed me the face of someone in protocol. Ah! I said, oh God, this is going. I called him immediately. I said, where are you? I said, come quickly. This is for you. And he came and I gave you a surprise. I said, bye bye. Before any unbelief will enter and I'll collect my team back. Go. I love you, Jesus. That was from the spirit. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more than anything. Oh, it takes faith to move mountains, brothers and sisters. I love you, Jesus. There is no instruction I will not obey. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you. More than anything. Listen. It says through faith. They subdued kingdoms. They wrought righteousness. They shut the mouths of lions. He said what more can I say. For time will fail me. To speak to you about Gideon. And Barak and Jephthah. Ordinary men who obey God to the latter. Sister, when you obey God, that man must come. It doesn't matter where he is. Forget about witches and wizards. Concentrate on your obedience. Concentrate. There are some of you, God told you, drag your family members and bring them here. The word came with the grace for it to happen. You say, Master, we have toiled all night. There are times God can use a man to speak to you. They tell you, go and listen to relationship and family life. I have listened to it before. No, no. Remember, you are responding to a word. Don't forget. He may tell you to do what you have always done. But this time around, there is an anointing upon it. You will do it and see very seemingly crazy instructions. God can tell you, just sit down on these drums. And just be playing and clashing the cymbal and praying it. Don't do it. Do it. If you are ashamed of men, forget about greatness. You will never carry certain levels of the anointing. I went for six hours in Joss, standing at the Renhard Bonke Kuse because I was desperate. And, and I set my gaze on that man because there was something I wanted to land on. I was not sitting down asking stupid questions that people ask when they go to places. Ah, this man, this white man, why is he wasting our time? Is there Rema or no Rema? That was not my, I was at my, my, my face was set like a flint. Brothers and sisters, listen. Wait, the financial prosperity series I'm about to preach, I truly believe it will cause a revolution. There are new things that the Lord has shown me that I put my hand on my head. I say, my goodness, Joshua Selman, where have you been? Your life must change. We're in the season of the rain. Obedience is the platform. Don't blame anybody. Take responsibility. There are only three prayer points tonight we are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. Sorry about the time. We are really working on beating the time. But I want you to pray. Begin to thank God for the word tonight. Begin to thank him for the word tonight. It's time for new levels of grace. New fountains. New levels of impact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray. Prayer point number one. Lord, help me 
and give me a receptive spirit to hear your instructions and to see your conditions as demanded by scripture lift your voice please pray seriously this is the time to pray and not walk around inside and outside let our spirits be open oh god that as we study may we see instructions may we not just see promises but conditions your level is changing, I tell you. Your level is changing, I tell you. God is not a man that you should lie. He's not the son of man that you should repent. Lord, I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I receive a receptive spirit. I'm receptive to your instruction. Bretes <laughs> hallelujah listen there are conditions tied to you walking in divine health there are conditions tied to influence and increase and honor there are conditions tied to prosperity there are conditions tied to longevity find out we have preached these things our messages are full of these keys prayer point number two lord jesus speak to me speak to me i'm ready to obey speak to me let your word supply grace reveal the strategy pray show me the key to the next level of breakthrough to the next level of influence to the next level of encounter to the next level of the anointing through dreams, through vision, through the written word, through prophetic direction, instruction will come in messages as you walk. Hallelujah. 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 Prayer point number three. I want you to pray this with all your heart. Cry for a fresh supply of grace for prompt and complete obedience. Some of you, God has given you instructions. There are seeds to sow. There are places to go. There are tapes to listen to. There are encounters. There are retreats to have. You have not obeyed, so you will never see his glory. Lift your voice and cry. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. Let's get to the 
Hallelujah. Watch this. It is after you obey that you can now begin to confess. And then you can now sow a seed and tie a seed to it. Except if the sowing of the seed is the instruction. Or that if I'm believing God say for a house. And I find out. God gives me an instruction. Go and get an architectural design and see the kind of house you want. That's an instruction. Don't sit down and start giving foolish arguments. Now I go and I say Lord I found what I want. God will say go and estimate. How much will it cost? Now you, you estimate and you say it will cost 15 million. <laughs> You are sitting down. All you have home and abroad is 500 naira. Forget about it. And look, the blessing is in the instruction. It's not in what you have. Whether, you, you, whether it is 1,000 or 1 billion, it is still faith that will bring it. Hallelujah. And now you begin to pray. And while you pray, God will say, relax. He said, don't worry. Just relax. It will come as a seed. You have had the word. You stand still. And you begin to prophesy. Or God will say, now go and sow a seed for it. Or you want to get married, for instance. And, and, and you are praying and you are thanking God. You are saying, Lord, thank you for this. And then you find out God gives you an instruction in the place of prayer. Maybe go and wash the plate. Go to one woman who is already married. It may even be your friend. He said, just go on a Saturday and help them sweep and wash their plate. That's the instruction. If you are too ashamed to do it, forget about marriage. It may be crazy. But go and do it. After you have done that, then you can now begin to prophesy. And you can now connect with a seed. And say, Lord, I sow a seed into this. And I speak. My marriage is coming. The man that God is bringing, like our sister said, is a blessed man. He's a godly man. Your obedience is complete. Something is wrong with your family. Your husband or your wife is misbehaving. And all of that. You don't sit there and say, me and you will enter the same trouser. What has entering the same trouser got to do with, with the solution? You don't need to enter the same trouser. You need a word from God. All these stupid cultural things that we put, we must enter the same trouser. And do what? Is it going to solve the problem? Get a word from God. Where you are confused, come for counsel. This is the situation. What do you think? What is the, what is the scriptural mystery? What is the principle? That is responsible for the delivery of this. Right? That's why we pray. That's why we come here all the time. We are dispensing mysteries. As these mysteries are dispensed. It's falling on different people. You catch it and you walk with it. It has changed the lives of people from nothing. It has taken people to wherever they will go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very fearful and touching testimony. A gentleman listen to my message he's been following my teachings and he's been listening to my messages and they are trusting god he's a real estate person he's trusting god for breakthroughs and all of that and then a miracle just happened to him within a short time they gave him 60 hectares of land to develop and sell his profit from that is 300 million he's a young man like me the word as if that will finish when i when i got to abuja he made sure every time i go to abuja he makes sure he's the one driving me around he said I must drive you the last time I went he said they gave him another 40 hectares making 100 hectares what is it that God cannot do your obedience are you hearing what I'm saying your obedience your obedience your obedience I hear a lot of testimonies testimonies you were I think many of us have, have we've heard about the testimony of the woman who for eight years was barren, Selena's auntie also. And this woman supernaturally, by acting the word of God, had triplets. They are all alive today. Triplets to recover for the eight years. What is it that God cannot do? 
Don't come, we say, write prayer requests. It's when you are here that you just scrabble in what is even your own. You are just playing games with God. That's why very few people get testimonies. Change your attitude from today. Let it not be Friday by five. You say, it's time for koinonia. Be intentional about it. There are people who come in for miracle service. We all fast on Thursdays. But on Friday, they, they prepare. When I'm coming for koinonia, it's as if, do you know, you see me sit down sometimes here. My body is shaking. I'm just waiting for worship to finish. Testimonies, when people are shouting, you see, there's answer. I want to just dispense what God has brought. But there are people who just sit down. You bring a teaspoon and you want, you want to have an ocean of blessings. Enlarge your capacity. Let's pray one more prayer point before we round up. Hold up the hand of your neighbor. You are going to pray and say, Lord, this is the season where you are changing his level. Changing her level. Go ahead and prophesy. Prophesy. How great you are. How great you are. Oh, your level must change. How great you are. Koinonia, it's time for a new season. It's the season of the rain. Don't be a spectator. My financial level must change. My spiritual life must change. My influence must change. The grace of God upon my life must move higher. I'm ready to obey. How great you are. Oh, 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 how glad you are! Hey, how glad you are! How glad you are! How glad you are! Shake it, shake it, shake it, get up, bara, bara, bara. How great you are. Lift your hands and let me prophesy over your life. There is, see, for Koinonia, God is shifting us. I know it. I feel it. God is shifting us. You can choose to believe it. You can sit down there and let other people just through the tapes. Or you can connect to the anointing and say, this is my season. I place a demand on everything that is at work in this house. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Let the spirit of faith, the capacity to obey God without reservation, the meekness, the childlikeness to obey God, let it be released upon your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that as a result of this teaching tonight, let there be a rain of testimonies. Let there be miracles upon miracles upon miracles. Financial miracles. Miracles of multiplied graces. Miracles of marriages. Miracles of breakthroughs. Miracles of favor. Miracles of lifting. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the influence of the kingdom comes upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will begin to command influence across your territory. By the mystery of the oil of gladness. Let it take you above your fellows. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus. That the mantle of honor. That which makes men. He said, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That beginning from tonight, everywhere you go, you will find men who will honor you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will find men who will honor you. I pray for everything that is dead or dying in this place. I don't care what it is. By the same power that raised Christ from the dead. I speak to everything that is dead in your life. I command it tonight, come back to life. Dead academic situations, 
come back to life now dead financial situations come back to life now dead family situations come back to life now hear me whatever has covered your glory and has stopped men from seeing the hand of God I tear that veil into pieces in the name of Jesus Christ whatever has stopped men from favoring you they used to bless you but something happened mysteriously the same people are still around but the blessings have stopped I connect you by faith to that flow of the blessing in the name of Jesus Christ the season where you must bear fruit I prophesy upon you be fruitful be fruitful multiply in the name of Jesus replenish I command that you subdue every force of darkness and every force of witchcraft and every cause and every enchantment and I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus have dominion everywhere you go let there be an anointing upon you anyone that comes under the jurisdiction of your influence i compel them to bless you i compel them to honor you in the name that is above all names i command that a book of remembrance makato toto balakata like mordecai whoever has done good and your 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 reward has not come tonight as you sleep in the heavenlies let the book of remembrance be open may my God use strangers to bless you may he use strangers to bring your business back to life may my God bring strangers to bless your family and I pray for you greater levels of the anointing you belong to a ministry that works in an ever increasing anointing may that be at work in your life I command that the level you are in the anointing you have lingered there for too long step up to a new level step up to a new level a new level of the healing anointing a new level of the anointing of prophecy a new level of the gifts of the spirit in the name of Jesus I release this power from here on stage upon this altar I prophesy it let it touch you and let it change you in the name of Jesus Lord your people must bear result I command you be fruitful I command it be fruitful students be fruitful workers be fruitful in the name of Jesus businessmen be fruitful everything that has refused to work I invoke the laws of the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ I command in a miraculous way let things begin to work whoever needs to call you this week whoever needs to connect you whoever needs to come to your business whoever needs to give you a job I prophesy in the name of the Lord Jesus may my father bring them to you hallelujah lift your hands and give him praise lift your hands and give him praise your life will never be the same hallelujah now very quickly while standing all of you there are people here inside and outside who are saying man of God for me I need to reconnect with God either you have never truly made Jesus Lord of your life probably you were invited or you've been coming here again and again but you are saying enough is enough I want to take God seriously or there are some of you who have been here you love God but for some reason challenges and pressures pushed you and you push God out it's time to reconnect it never will happen outside of Christ never will happen in one minute we're out of time wherever you are as they begin to celebrate them please leave your seat inside and outside don't wait for anybody to start coming before you come leave your seat and come and say i want to truly get serious with jesus christ find your way quickly please save time they are coming from outside celebrate them please clear the way for them celebrate them keep coming 
Come and line up before Jesus Christ. Please, as you come here, be very, very serious. Be very, very serious as you come out. Keep coming. Clap for them, Koinonia. God is harvesting his people to change their stories. Say, say no to the devil. Don't sit back there when you should be out. You know the voice of God. You can't pretend you are not hearing it. You know the voice of God. Make your way to the front. Please win that war in your life. This is about your destiny. Forget about whoever knows you or who doesn't know you. Make your way to the front. Jesus is calling you for a new beginning. The devil has been cheating you. This is 2015. It's the year of the rain. You can't allow the devil to destroy your life again. If there are still more people outside as I lead them to pray, please make your way to the front. It matters your relationship with God. Don't say it does not matter. It's not just about breakthrough. It matters. Those of you in front here, I salute you. Some of you are rededicating your lives to Jesus. Some of you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time. Look at me. I want you to make a true commitment from the depth of your heart. Don't everybody you see here made this decision. I made it. There is nothing embarrassing about it. As I look at us, I see addictions. I see all kinds of things. But the power of God is able to set you free. Lift your right hand and pray. Pray consciously. You are not reciting a poem. Pray from the depth of your spirit. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I return to you. I truly love you from the depths of my heart today I repent of my sins I make Jesus Lord of my life I have discovered that it does not pay to walk outside of your love you died for me and I receive your gift of righteousness and eternal life I make Jesus Lord of my life and from today I declare that the power of sin is broken over my life I receive eternal life into my spirit from today forward ever and backward never I break free from wrong associations I break free from everything that has kept me down it's time for me to move forward my destiny is calling and I'm determined to get there now keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for bringing these ones out. They came to make a public declaration of their stand and their faith. I break the hold and the power of sin over their lives. I command the devil that has been oppressing you and has stopped you from experiencing God out of them right now. In the name of Jesus, I cause that spirit, the power of sin be broken over their lives. From today, I release upon you grace to love God, grace to serve God, grace to be passionate. Let, let a hunger for the things of the spirit come upon you beyond the appetites of the flesh. I truly break the law of sin and death from your life and I release the grace of God upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. Now look at me, please. Tuesdays by three by four automatically please is a rule here once you get born again for one month you are automatically a member of the prayer department this is to help you after one month you can decide to leave or you can join any other department but you have to be with them for one month four to six at cgc meanwhile i want you to follow the ushers by the grace of god from next week i, I hope that when i'm around or we'll put a structure to follow up all those who give their lives to Christ. Would that be fine? So that even if it is on Monday or Tuesday. Oh sorry at Rema. At Rema Chapel. So that at least I can have a word. We, we don't want you to get born again and just be wasted. We want to preserve you and guide you. Praise the Lord. Bring that lady please. Just a minute. I know we're out of time. Let this lady be delivered from every wicked spirit. Look at this lady tied from head to toe. Let her go. This is Koinonia. Out! Release her right now. Release her destiny. That spirit of addiction leaves her. In the name of Jesus. Don't waste our time. Live here now. Leave her. Leave her. I call.
cast that spirit out and never return in the name of Jesus Christ. All right, so gentlemen, thank you so, so much. She will never be the same again. I cause lust, I cause addiction, I cause this marine spirit. I see a lot of snakes moving around this lady. And this deliverance is not just for her, it's for her family. And this, this stubbornness, she's free from it in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. Don't be afraid of bringing people here. This is truly Bethel. They will never come here and go back the same. Praise the Lord. So follow the lady waving her hands, everybody. Koinonia, celebrate them. Follow this lady. Very quickly, we're out of time. Hallelujah. Keep standing. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.